everyone welcome back to spectrum classes today in this video we are going to discuss about the analysis of given inorganic mixture for acid and basic radicals so this topic is very very important from the class 12th bsc as well as msc students point of view because it is salt analysis or inorganic mixture analysis is given in their syllabus and most of the students do the experiments and they actually want to know the basics behind these acid basic radicals which they actually do not know here i am going to discuss the points which my students ask while we are performing our experiments in the laboratory so i hope that questions may also help you to understand the basics behind these acid and basic radicals so let's start with the video First, here acid and basic radical. So before that, we must know what is called radicals. So radical is an atom or group of atoms which are carrying charge or having charge. Here atoms are like zinc, lead, chloride, and group of atoms is like sulfur and oxygen. In combination, they form sulfates. So zinc ion, lead ion, chloride ion, and sulfate ions. Now the next term is qualitative sometimes aim of the experiment is written as qualitative analysis of a given salt mixture for acid and basic radicals and what is the inference made from this qualitative term so qualitative means only just to identify the cations or anions cations or anions that is basic as well as acid radicals present in the salt mixture only just to identify that Opposite to this, there is a term which is known as quantitative. It is come from the quantity and quantity means the amount of cations and anions present in the given salt mixture. We are measuring that which is we have done in the volumetric analysis and some other techniques. So this is a qualitative analysis, not a quantitative analysis. The next is what is called acid and basic radical. First, you understand the acids, so which having displaceable H plus ions, for example, HCl, H2SO4, HNO3, etc. And if we remove H plus from these acids, then what we get? We get chloride ion, sulfate ion, and nitrate ions. So these are called acid radicals. And what we understood from here that acid radicals carry negative charge. The next is basic radical. So what is called base? Base are those species which are having hydroxyl ions. So for example, sodium hydroxide, zinc hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide, etc. These are bronstant acid and base. If we remove OH- minus from the, these bases, then what we get? We get sodium plus, zinc 2 plus, magnesium 2 plus, etc. And these are known as basic radicals. And what we see over here that all basic radicals carrying positive charge. So this is how we come to know what is called acid radicals, which are derived from the acids and basic radicals, which are derived from bases. The next thing is neutralization reaction. Acid on reaction with base that forms salt. Here, if the sodium hydroxide reacts with HCl acid, then what it forms? It forms sodium chloride, which is a salt. Since in a salt, we are going to find out acid as well as basic radicals. Fine. So that is why we call it salt analysis. The next thing, what is the application of this salt analysis? Application of this salt analysis is that it is simple, easy and cheap method and it can be performed in any of the laboratory with some chemicals only for qualitative analysis of the presence of various cations and anions. In the absence of the salt analysis, we need to measure the presence of these cations and anions by various methods which are very expensive and they are not easily found in several institutes. For example, XRD, AAS, etc. That is why this has its own applications and its own importance. The basic radicals are shown in this table are grouped into different groups 
starting from 0 to 6 and uh, their group reagents are also given. They are categorized based on their nature of salt and their group reagents. Here onwards we are going to discuss the basics on which these basic radicals are categorized. So first is type of salt, second is solubility product and the third is common ion effect. So these are the key points on which basis we are going to group these cations or basic radicals in different groups and on that basis their group reagents are also decided. So let's start one by one type of salts. So before going to type of salts, I would like to summarize the categorization of metals based on their reactivity. This I have already discussed in one of my video. I will give the link of that video in the description box. On the basis of their reactivity, metals are categorized in five different categories. As you see here, salts which are formed by these metals are summarized here. So these alkali metals are very reactive and they react with the acids and they form their chloride, sulfates and carbonate and these are soluble while alkaline earth metals form sulfates and carbonates and these are insoluble in nature. Aluminium, chromium, manganese etc. they form oxides and hydroxide. Similarly, copper, iron, lead, silver, mercury etc. forms sulfides which are insoluble. So these salts on the basis of their solubility these basic radicals are grouped into different groups. For more details you can check my video minerals and ores. Moreover, I have located all the cations which are in the periodic table. These are the main basic radicals which are usually done in the laboratory. And apart from these cations, there are several other reports also available in literature. So I am not going into that. As I told you earlier that sodium and potassium alkali metals and these are very reactive. So these metals are grouped into zero group of acid and base radicals. Here are the alkaline earth metals. And the carbonates of these alkaline earth metals are insoluble. So these are categorized in two different groups. One is fifth group, so calcium, strontium, barium is categorized in the fifth group whereas the magnesium metal which is of the same group is categorized in the sixth group of the basic radical. Since this is more reactive as compared to these, its hydroxides are insoluble actually. So this is categorized differently from its group metals. Now this is the third period of the periodic table and in the third period we are having aluminum. And this aluminium in the basic radical table is also located in the third group along with iron and chromium. Apart from these groups, all the other metals which are highlighted here are categorized into first, second and fourth group. That we are going to discuss in the next slide. The purpose of showing here is that you can easily understand how these metals are located. Three groups you may memorize very easily. This will give you hint. So how we are going to memorize these basic radicals? Here trick to memorize basic radicals. In the group 0 what I said in my previous slide sodium potassium and apart from the sodium potassium Ammonia is the only radical which is which is a group of elements, right? Ammonia NH4 plus in the zero group. And what about this fifth group? So you easily recognize barium, strontium, calcium and in the sixth group is your magnesium. So these two are from alkaline earth metal. And these are the alkali metals along with ammonia. Now we are coming to the group one. So in the group one lead, mercury, silver is placed since their chlorides are insoluble. Now coming to the second group. So second in the second group repeat this lead and mercury and thereafter bismuth, copper, cadmium and there is a trick to memorize this lead, mercury, we could. I just want to say good but I said could. So here Cu stands for copper and Cd stands for cadmium and this bismuth gives us hint for the next group. So next is what? This is again the second group but this is categorized as second B. So from bismuth we have idea. Bismuth is from which group? Arsenic, antimony. From this antimony you can get idea about the tin. So T-I-N. 
though this is not related but it's okay you can memorize this the next group group 3 is as i told you in my previous slide that aluminium is 3 plus and it is placed in the third period of the periodic table so this is of third group aluminium iron chrome so how we are going to memorize this all iron cars and in the next group fourth group nickel manganese cobalt zinc so may note cosy m stands for manganese and n stands for nickel may not cosy or you can use many cosy all iron cars may not cosy or many cosy whichever you feel good you can memorize in that way so this is the very scientific method through which you can memorize these and what is the basic behind group 2a and group 2b group 2 gives black ppt with h2s when we are adding to the group 2 yellow ammonium sulfide then these are soluble and these are insoluble that is why they are categorized for memorizing the group reagents this is a very funny technique and this is very effective too you just memorize a b c a is the first alphabet and it is placed at first group right so a since it is an odd number so b placed on the second odd number b C plays on the next odd number that is 5. Here A stands for acid, B stands for base and C stands for carbonate. So you come to know for first group we are having acid as a group reagent. For third group we are having base as a group reagent and for fifth group we are having ammonium carbonate as a group reagent. And in between these second and fourth place are filled by H2S gas. And for zero and sixth group no group reagent is specified so this is how you can memorize now i am showing you the exact for first acid is dilute acid for three it is base base is nh4oh for fifth group it is ammonium carbonate for second and fourth place you are placing h2s if you forget then all the salts are of ammonium salts for group zero and for group six no specified group reagent is mentioned so this is about the basic radicals and their group reagent in the next video we are going to discuss the next basic points like solubility product and the common ion effects in my next video that is again very important concept to know before doing the experiments for acid and base i hope you find this video helpful and interesting if you find this video helpful please write me in the comment section that motivates me to make more videos and work on the different concepts subscribe my channel give me a thumbs up thank you all thanks for watching